I grew up with friends of different races. When I married a Malaysian Indian and when I had a, my first child, my husband and I felt that we need to go and register the child as Malaysian. Not defined by race because she's of mixed races. We want our child to start looking at issues no longer from the perspective of race. I mean, the baggage that we have in our generation and the generation before us should not be carried by the generation to come. I was very excited indeed and I thought it is a dream worth growing old for. Malaysia owes its origins in Genesis to communal politics. You cannot get away from it. Can we do without it? Yes, we can, but not in this generation. During the Abdullah Badawi uh, era, a lot more religious issues came out. For the first time, uh, non-Muslims were feeling that you see, their rights uh, were being trampled to a certain extent. Whereas before, under the previous uh, regime, there was a lot of compromise. Now politicians all depend on all this race-based uh, rhetorics actually to survive and to win votes. They just want a fair opportunity to bid for a contract or to be enrolled into university. And I don't think they're asking for drastic changes. They just want to be treated fairly. For a country to move forward, for the people to move forward together, they first have to have a common goal, common objective, a common identity, which is what is lacking in Malaysia. In the current political climate, it's obviously not uh, realistic to move away from race-based politics. Having said that, uh, the uh, Prime Minister did that in 1991. His response to a more Malay-centric opposition politics at that time was Bangsa Malaysia, Vision 2020. So uh, unfortunately, the current leadership does not have similar powers or similar influence to seize the narrative and try to move away from uh, race-based politics like, like what he did in 1991. It's almost a continuation of Vision uh, 2020, where we stronger focus or equal focus, not just on developed or unified Malaysia, but equitable Malaysia, inclusive Malaysia, that everyone uh, benefit. It is an implicit kind of acceptance that some things need to stay. What's important is at the psychological level, each government uh, must not give the impression that Malay rights have been taken away. Although at the practical level, I don't think it's as aggressive as it was before. But that's largely also because uh, a lot more Malays had come up, a lot more Malays had received uh, higher education. So to a certain extent, that has kind of acted as a moderating force, you see, against implementing affirmative action policy fully and more extensively. We will be in denial if we say we don't need race-based. It is very important to still use race-based, but it must be very selective. There have been so many false starts. We are all doing the same things every time and we are expecting different results. Probably for 10 years, I don't think anything will really happen. People generally identify themselves as ethnic Chinese first or ethnic Malay first before they could call themselves Malaysian. So that is a major obstacle. Unless you put it into constitutional or legal form, it will not work that well. Policy alone is not enough. Therefore, this 2030 shared future is good on the earlobe, but it may not succeed after Mahade is no longer in that chair. <laughs>